Hello students, so today we are going to cover the topics liquefaction of gases, vapor pressure, surface tension and viscosity. So let us start with liquefaction of gases. Okay, so here pressure, volume and temperature. Okay, we have to see the relation between what pressure, volume and temperature. Okay, of any substance in gaseous state also as well as in liquid state okay so this was first given by whom thomas andrew okay he plotted isotherms of carbon dioxide at various temperature we know what is an isotherm here temperature is kept constant but the constant it is with certain value isn't it and so we draw the this isotherms okay now here what did he find in his uh, experiment he found that if the temperature is too high okay so it just behave as the what the ideal isotherms of the ideal gases which we have studied earlier okay so they both become same only they behave like the ideal gases isotherms only okay but one thing is there he saw that at very high temperature we can't liquefy this carbon dioxide. It is not that if we are going on increasing the pressure and carbon dioxide is being liquefied. No, it just doesn't happen. And this is explained by the graph given by him. Now let us study about the Thomas Andrew graph which he said about what uh, the pressure and volume, how it is related with the temperature isotherm we said constant temperature okay but at different levels okay we'll be seeing here at what pressure it is being liquefying what is the volume what is the temperature how they are related okay in this so let us start his graph um, at 50 degrees celsius okay what happened he saw what it is 50 degrees Celsius pressure. I have written here how much P3. It is more than 73 atmospheric pressure. Okay, what happened? He saw what that the this gas carbon dioxide is existing in the gaseous form only. Okay, now he saw then at 31.1 degrees Celsius. What did he see? He see he saw that. At this temperature and pressure is more than 73 atmospheric pressure, okay. He saw that here also it is existing in the gaseous form. And they were at these two temperatures when we are saying this carbon dioxide was showing just the behavior of the ideal gas. Okay. Now, when he took temperature 30.98 degrees Celsius, okay. And the pressure was what? Uh, 73 atmospheric pressure. First time he could see that yes carbon dioxide is liquefying. But it was not at any volume. Volume he calculated it and he noted down that that temperature where it first liquefied Okay, it is the highest temperature at which this CO2 is getting liquefied and it is known as what? Critical temperature. Okay, now here the volume he calculated at this temperature, critical temperature, one mole of that gas at that uh, critical temperature is known as what? Critical volume. Okay, now here what did he see? That at 73 atmospheric pressure, it is being liquefied. Okay. So, at this critical temperature, the pressure at critical temperature is known as critical pressure. Okay. Now, what did he see then? He saw that, yes, in this you can see, here, at this temperature, 30.98 degrees Celsius, when he went on increasing the what pressure he could see that yes it is existing in the liquid form okay then after that he saw what that yes 
the temperature taken by him was 21.5 degrees Celsius. Okay. At this pressure was P2. Okay. Now what did he see? That here comparatively the volume was more. The area covered was more. It means what? It was showing that here carbon dioxide is in the liquid form also and in the gaseous form also. It is existing in both the forms. As the result, it is showing a large amount of volume. Okay, but when he went on increasing the pressure, he saw what? That yes, it is existing in the liquid form. Okay, then he took what? Temperature 13.1 degree Celsius. Now he saw that yes, more area was covered by this CO2. It means it is not only in the liquid form, gaseous form is also existing. Okay? And naturally went on increasing the pressure and he saw that yes, it is forming what? It is found in the liquid form. Okay? But here it was saying that what? Yet that there is an equilibrium between the liquid and the gaseous form of what? Carbon dioxide. And as the result, we are getting a bigger value of what? Volume. Okay. If one thing must be noted again. Here that you can see. Here, volume. It is being increased and at a certain period. Now, this what happens? This volume where you are seeing more. It is what? It is existing in the gaseous form. Okay. So, it is not that ki if... The temperature is 30.98 degree Celsius. Everywhere it will be existing in the liquid form only. Okay. We are saying that as we are going down naturally what is happening volume is increasing. And as a result there is an equilibrium between the liquid and the gaseous form of carbon dioxide. Okay. Initially I said to you when pressure is increased too much. Then the gaseous doesn't liquefy. Actually what happens when too much pressure is applied? What happens? The molecules again try to repel each other. And naturally what will happen? It will exist in the form of gaseous form. Okay. Now. Here you are seeing what critical temperature I explained you. Okay. Here critical temperature of carbon dioxide is how much? 30.98 degree Celsius pressure. 73 atmospheric pressure and the volume we have taken as VE we have just named it. So this is where it has appeared first time in the liquid form. Above that, okay, what happened? It is existing in the form of gaseous form, okay. And below when we are seeing that uh, this uh, temperature, we are seeing it is existing in the both form, liquid as well as gaseous. So the, what the volume is increasing, okay. So here, PC, TC and VC. What is this? Pressure, temperature and volume C for the critical. So critical pressure, critical temperature and critical volume. These all are what? Constants. Okay. This is how Thomas Andrew explained what? Liquefaction of gases. So one thing you must remember beta that the gases which are present below the critical temperature okay the amount here you can see the volume has increased so liquid and uh, gases both are existing i said so the volume is becoming more so here the gases which are present okay they are also known as what they are, uh, it is also known as what vapors okay and the pressure exerted by this vapor is known as what vapor pressure so now let us study about the liquid state okay so, when we talk about liquid state, we say that yes, it is having a definite volume, isn't it? Uh, why we say that it is having a definite value, volume? Actually, what happens in this? When we are talking about the gases, the molecules separate apart, isn't it? It, is, it has got tremendous amount, uh, amount of space between the molecules. But in case of uh, liquid, it doesn't happen, okay? Here the molecules do not separate from each other so easily. And as the result we say that yes, they have got what? Definite volume. Okay. Now, vapor pressure. What is this vapor pressure? Okay. 
We have studied right now Thomas and Riom graph of what uh, liquefaction of gases of uh, carbon dioxide. In that we have studied that yes, there is a, um, a, a specific temperature, okay, and uh, at specific the volume area we have seen in which what we have seen that yes, it exists in the liquid form also and in the gaseous form also. There when it is existing as the gaseous form, it is known as what vapors and the Pressure exerted by these vapors are known as what? Vapor pressure. Okay. So, vapor pressure, it is, it depends on what? Temperature. Okay. It is not that we can say that vapor pressure of this gas is this. Okay. We will be saying that at this temperature, the vapor pressure of the gas will have this value. Okay. So, now, what is boiling? Actually, boiling is the condition of free vaporization throughout the liquid. It means what? Whole liquid is participating in what? Uh, forming the vapor in case of boiling. Not really like evaporation. In evaporation, only surface is taking participating in what? Uh, vaporizing. But in boiling, what happens? It is a condition of free vaporization throughout the liquid. Okay. Now, temperature at a certain temperature what happens this vapor pressure is equal to what the external pressure and that temperature is known as what boiling temperature at that pressure okay so here when we are saying about normal boiling point okay normal boiling point when we say it is one atmospheric pressure okay and that is known as what boiling temperature but when we are saying standard boiling point, okay, so it is 1 bar pressure, okay, and that is also known as what? Boiling temperature. It depends, you are taking what normal boiling point or you are taking what standard boiling point. If you are taking normal boiling point, you will be taking what? 1 atmospheric pressure. If you are taking standard boiling point, then you will be taking 1 bar pressure. So don't get confused in that. Now let us study about surface tension. Surface tension means what? Tension created at the surface. Okay. So what happens? The liquid tries to minimize its surface area. Okay. And as a result, you will be seeing what it, when it is minimizing the area, okay, it will be accommodated in a small area only. Okay. So here, why does this happen? Let us understand. Okay. Suppose in this container, this in this beaker, we are seeing what? It is filled with what? Water. Okay. So it is consisting of what? Water molecules. So a molecule of water over here, it gets forces from downward also and upward also and sideways also. Hmm? Naturally, it is in a balanced form and its energy will be less. But when we see at the surface, what happens? Here you can see beta. what the forces are more downwards. Why? Because from the up, no forces are there to balance it. But in the side, the forces are balanced. So now what we are seeing over here? Is the energy balanced over here? No. Downwards it is more. Isn't it? And as the result, what happens? Its energy becomes unstable and it becomes more is that situation right for any molecule no every molecule tries to minimize its energy as a result if little amount of temperature is also applied what happens these molecules escape out in atmosphere okay so here this is only the surface tension also what happens here actually if no force is here, what will happen? A tension is created at the, the surface and this is only known as what surface tension. Okay. And na naturally, no forces. Naturally, if small amount of temperature is also applied, it will move up. And it will try to become stable. Okay. So, SI unit of surface tension is Newton per meter. Okay. Now, what is this surface energy actually? Here I said to you about what? The here energy is unstable. Here energy is stable. Isn't it? 
here the energy is not stable and as a result it will try to attain stability more energy is there and this energy can be if this energy is said to be what the surface energy okay okay and its unit is what joule per meter square okay now applications of surface tension okay what happens we see rain falling down isn't it but what do we see rain drops what are these why it has been formed in the form of drops let us understand okay what happens i said to you what at the surface energy is not stable naturally if we are seeing all the water like that hmm so what will happen the molecules which are stable also over here what will happen all starts flowing having what unstable energy at the surface and naturally if any thing is present over here okay it will try to get in and minimize its area to become what stable and as the result we see that yes this liquid what happens it tries to form a spherical shape in order to minimize the surface area okay one more application of surface tension is there that is the capillary action naturally what will happen in capillary action you will see that yes what happens the liquid enters the uh tube i'll say or you, we can say cap capillary action is what filling off this liquid in a narrow tube a tube like structure okay naturally it form it gets in and it will i'm saying you it will minimize the area so naturally here it will try to form what a bubble instead of what falling down and getting unstable okay now let us understand the capillary action of what water and um this mercury okay and we will be seeing the meniscus also okay so if in this suppose tube what is kept water is kept okay in this tube what is kept mercury is kept okay we will be saying saying what that this is having in which water is present it is having a concave meniscus and in which mercury is present it is having convex meniscus okay so here actually what happens in case of water okay here the cohesive forces are dominant it means what cohesive forces are more than the adhesive forces and as the result it forms what a concave meniscus but when we are seeing of mercury here adhesive forces are more than the cohesive forces and as the result it will have what convex meniscus okay so this is also done in order to minimize the uh, surface uh, minimize the pressure or the minimize the instability at the surface okay or the uh, tension created at the surface it takes the shape of a concave and this takes the shape of convex thereby saying that it is having what concave meniscus and this is having what convex meniscus now let us study its viscosity so what is this viscosity it is the property of the liquid which determines their resistance to flow okay what is this property of the liquid that determines the resistance to flow okay it means there is some frictional force which is not allowing it to flow more freely isn't it for example you take the example of water and you take the example of honey 
Okay, spill it on the floor. You'll see what the water is flowing first. But the honey, no, it has stopped. Actually, what happens? In case of water, the frictional force is less. So resistance to flow is also less and as a result it is flowing properly. But what happens in honey? Frictional force is more. Naturally resistance to flow will be what? More. So when the resistance is there it will not flow properly. Isn't it? And what happens actually? Let's suppose in this the first layer of the liquid is flowing. Okay. In this manner. And this is known as what? Laminar flow. It is flowing in, in the straight manner. But what happens? The layers of the liquid which is below it. Okay, you are seeing that there is a decrease in the flow rate. Isn't it? And as a result, this type of flow is known as what? Laminar flow. And here you can see how we will be calculating it. So here what frictional force is directly proportional to what? Area into velocity upon x. x is what? This distance of separation of the layer. Okay. And here frictional force when we are removing this proportionality sign is equal to what? A coefficient of viscosity. Okay. And area into velocity upon x. Where this is what? It will be a constant only. Okay, because we are using this term as a constant. So, frictional force is equal to this coefficient of viscosity only when it will be like that. When area is equal to 1 centimeter cube, velocity is, is equal to what? 1 meter, 1 centimeter per second and this x, okay, is how much? 1 centimeter and this is known as what? one poise okay and this one poise represent what dime centimeter inverse to and second okay so this is the unit of what viscosity with this viscosity we come to the end of the chapter of states of matter hope you might have understood it good day take care